Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, we finally, finally found Evie again. I was so sure that she had been a loss to the ages out here, wandering somewhere far away on the other side of the island, but the moment she saw Vine's grand peacock tail, she was pretty much smitten, so she slid out from the grass, and Chess finally found her too. I guess now he has the slightly more difficult task of tearing her attention away from Vine. I suppose he could probably use these streams to his advantage, though. He knows of two possible locations where he could do a spot of fishing after all. And I'm pretty sure that they also have the exact same fishing skill. Yeah, the tail gives her a two in fishing, too. So they could catch some pretty big fish together. In fact, she might actually impress him more with that, since he never had too many creatures to go fishing with. Only his sister ever really seemed interested in fishing. Oh, and in fact, look at this, Jasmine. You could actually gobble up that healing fruit on this turn and then hop right into that nest. So we'll finally get the chance to see what her second baby is going to look like, and perhaps see if they have that grand peacock tail just like Vine. But first, I want to go all the way back to Dreamer and Zara's territory, because as it turns out, the rogue male invasion has started again. This seems to be a brand new rogue male, at least I don't think we've ever seen him before. So, Dreamer, you might have to send him packing. Again, though, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. These creatures aren't quite strong enough, and sometimes the rogue males still breed with them even though we take a swipe. So maybe instead we should move Dreamer away? The only problem is that's going to set her off course to go meet Bandersnatch, the new baby who was just born in the nest by the swamps, and perhaps has a little bit of misinfluence in him too. Thankfully, he actually does have the Baryena Claw, so he's one of the strongest, just like his mother. But we're going to have to get Dreamer around there the long way, I guess. Let's bring you over here for now. Oh, is the bunnies skitter underneath your feet? Unfortunately, there's no time for catching bunnies anymore. You know, we are going to have to swipe at him if we want him to leave us alone. Dreamer, why don't you try one quick swipe? There we go, that may have actually sent him packing. I guess we're going to have to set you up over here, though. If we move you too close to that shore, there's always the potential that you could pick up a leech instead. I know you are very, very brave, but Zara isn't going to let you sacrifice yourself foolishly like that. In fact, let's bring her over here next. Maybe she could finally help by leading Kingsley over to their new territory? Oh, well, Kingsley, you only have six days remaining on your lifespan? Well, at least you're going to live long enough to see little Volt grow up, but you still need to meet your new baby, too. Thankfully, Sybil should be safe from the rogue male because she does have the spiky body, so we don't really have to worry about her. And in fact, I wonder if she would want to chase this rogue male away, too. The Defender Bear is so far away from this part of the land, I don't think we'll have to worry about him. So let's have Ben watch after the baby, and we'll have you hop your way over to Kingsley to lend him a hand. This could even be your way to let him know about the new baby, too. And I'm sure he is very, very excited to meet his strong little warrior. But let's have Kingsley hop as far as he can down the shore. Right over to the ladies, if possible. Can you two still sense the rogue male? Actually, it seems like that swipe may have seriously scared him. He must be way off in the other territory by now, maybe even wandering through the thorns themselves. Well, if we move Volt over here, just so we don't have any accidents, let's have Zara scoot just a tiny bit further down the shore. Oh, so close and yet so far away. Ooh, did I see somebody stealing that berry? Looks like we have another bunny situation on our hands. We did have to put a pause on the bunny hunting just because of the defender bear, so Kingsley's going to have to rally the troops again pretty soon. If we could move you between the two ladies, though, maybe you'll be intimidating enough for the rogue male that he won't come over and try to bother them again. Yeah, it really seems like that must have truly gotten through to him, which is more than we can say for most of the other rogue males that we've encountered, so fingers crossed everything is going to be fine over there. We have plenty of turns to make by the oak tree after all. So Jasmine, let's have you hop straight into this newly planted nest. We'll have you grab up this healing fruit, and we'll cross our fingers that that's going to be enough to keep this baby safe too. 
So far, that tradition has been a very, very lucky one, and it's one that I'm sure our entire tribe is going to take with them to the next islands. In fact, since we're getting so close to our 100th day, I'm thinking this is going to be the episode where we finally decide which one of these islands we're going to. Either the Oasis Island, at least that's what I'm assuming this is, some kind of savanna up in the north, or we could go over to the mountain instead. And I'll make sure that I set up a poll for you guys so we can officially decide which one we want. With the way that our genes are going right now, it kind of seems like the Oasis would be our better bet. Especially if Chess and Evie do actually settle down and start a family together, then their little line of fishers will surely flourish. I would imagine that Fine is really enjoying this new attention that he's getting, though. He does have a pretty big ego, and I'm sure that Evie's only fueling that. So it's not as though he's going to mind if she decides to tag along in his shadow. And since we are looking for bunnies right now, let's have everybody listen very, very closely into the darkness. Really, now is when all the bunnies are going to skitter away? All we have is a mole down here? Do you think they all moved back to the savannas? Maybe they're all here because they know the Defender Bear is watching. Well, maybe that means that Yuri is going to have to take a trip down to the berry bushes. He could be kind of like their judge, I guess. He can watch over the berries and try his best to pick them with his nimble fingers. But if any little bunny skitters in and steals one instead, that is going to be one point deducted from their team. Though I believe that Jade is also ready to have her BB too. So let's have you go ahead and pick up one extra acorn for good luck. Maybe you can hold that next to you as a way to summon your mother's spirit, since we don't have any healing fruits to give you luck instead. We'll want to make sure that Yuri is right by her side too. So again, with that one extra acorn, we'll bring him over here to pick up some of the extra grasses. I guess that could probably be considered a little flash of good luck too. That was where the peaceful bear left to sit and I'm pretty sure that's about where he passed away as well. So maybe that particular patch of grass is considered to be lucky? I don't know if that sounds too silly, but their family does seem pretty superstitious anyways. Oh, and of course, we can't forget about poor little Kipu. He's going to need somebody to teach him how to pick up these acorns too. Since he can't get around very well with his frog toes and his big body, and even his no paw as well, I think a stationary job like this would be for the best. Oh, Chess. Look at that. This little bunny didn't even know what he was getting into. I almost missed that. So have all the bunnies actually hopped away into the swamplands? Or the savannas, rather. Very, very interesting. He probably took that down with such ease because he wanted to impress Evie, too. But she still doesn't seem too interested. Let's have Fine jump his way all the way down here to the berry bushes lighting up the way for Yuri on the next turn. And of course, we'll have Evie trail right in his shadow, picking up the grasses as she goes. The more we clear out, the easier it's going to be for us to find those bunnies. Still no sign of the rogue male, right? Nope, I think you truly did scare him away. Well, that's a good sign, but hopefully he doesn't find our other creatures instead. Goodness knows, Kaya has been through enough. She's going to want to go on this bunny hunting mission too, but it's mainly because she's hoping to find some more Baryinas. She wants her revenge, because the Baryinas took away her mother far too early for her liking, so we'll have her skitter off in this direction too. I guess she might as well dig up the roots as she goes? I'm pretty sure that Evie found one over here as well. Yeah, she's actually sitting right on top of one right now. Oh, and the root that the peaceful bear always sat on is right over here too. I wonder if that would be another good way to entice Miss Starway, by performing these very familiar rituals for her. Though unfortunately, Kaya isn't going to have enough energy on this turn. Let's just bring her away over here, because that will give her the opportunity to pick some more poison berries on the next turn too. I'm kind of thinking that Rascal would probably want to go on this bunny hunting mission as well. While he certainly wouldn't be able to take them down, he might be a good distraction for us. We could send him off into the grasses to scare the bunnies out from hiding, flush them out of the darkness so our true hunters will be able to take them down. But I don't want him to leave Kipu's side right now, so we'll just settle him down beneath the branches. He might even be able to knock down some more of these acorns for him too. While Kipu is still far, far too young to do any true gathering, 
this will still be some good experience for him. Now, I'm pretty sure I saw a bunny over here too, Pixie. And I'm sure that you also noticed. It is hopping mighty close to the Savannah Kingdom, though. So I wonder if that's one of their problems instead. Let's have you stay here anyways. I want to make sure that you're right next to your sister as she has her baby, just so you can provide some support for her too. And as for you, Jess, you better hurry up and catch up to Evie, otherwise you're likely to lose her for good. Now that should be the last of our turns. We have two babies being born tonight. Oh, and look at this. Zara has actually pinned down yet another bunny too. Excellent. So with the rogue male nowhere in sight anymore, you should be able to pick that bunny off pretty easily in the morning. Now if we could set this up so we can see both of the babies in the nest, just in case anything goes wrong. Oh, we have another beautiful peacock tail, and neither of them passed away. Excellent! I think that this baby back here also has some nimble fingers, that's good to see. I guess Van Keer was even impressed with our acorn collecting. And she has such a beautiful name, too. Lumina to go right alongside that beautiful golden fur. Or maybe even those bright, piercing blue eyes. I guess the spiky body is a pretty good trait for our acorn collectors to have. That means that she'll never have to worry about any rogue males coming by to bother her. And she can just focus on her work. And as for the other baby over here with that beautiful peacock tail again, and this time he even has the ram horns too. He has the claws, so a four in strength. If only he had the big body, then he would be the strongest in the tribe. But he still beats his big brother Vine by a landslide. I love that they've both had those beautiful green eyes as well. And that pink mane on top of his head is pretty gorgeous too. He almost reminds me of a little flower in a way, which makes it kind of funny that he's one of the most deadly creatures in our tribe. But today was definitely a success. It seems like Mist has a bit of a closer connection to our tribe now, probably because of all of these rituals that we've kept up on. Now I see that a brand new bunny has come out to observe the situation as well. So Yuri, with you watching in the background, Let's see if Fine can jump on up here to land one of his very first bunnies. The first one, of course, went straight to Evie. That was how we invited her to the tribe. But he's not about to let anybody else take the first bunny on their hunting mission. He's here to prove himself as the greatest hunter of all. But since he is so young, that means that he's going to run out of energy much, much faster. He still has quite a few days to go before he's even old enough to grow his third gem. So that leaves the rest of the day to Chess and Evie and Kaya. I guess we might as well move Yuri down here too, to pick up all of the berries that he possibly can. And to watch over the darkness as well, to make sure nobody is slacking. Again though, I don't see too many bunnies out here anymore. Ooh, it looks like they're over here instead. Alright, so that's the direction that we want to go in next. Let's have Chas lead the charge here, maybe with Kaya right behind him, because I'm sure that Evie's going to jump back here to help find with the meat. You might actually be able to take down this bunny on this turn, too, if you haven't scared it away. And as Kaya grabs a fistful of berries, she'll be right behind you in just a moment. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to leave that there after all. We don't want her getting too far behind. Alright, Chess, why don't you sit down right here? Since there's plenty of grass over here too, maybe the bunnies will think that you don't notice them as they're skittering around in the darkness. Yeah, this is definitely where they've retreated to. Way in the back of the island? Through all of this uncharted territory, in fact. I wonder if the savannah back here is the bunny's home. Typically, they prefer the grasslands because that's where their bunny burrows spawn, and that's where most of the berry bushes spawn as well. The big, juicy ones with the most berries. But maybe they've devoured this land so much that it's turned into this wasteland. We'll have to see if Chess can investigate. Unfortunately, that does bring him pretty far away from his beloved streams. But I wonder if instead, he could try to find some clown koi in the waves. Now that would be a good way to impress Evie for sure, since neither of them possess the ability to pick one off in one swipe. Catching a clown koi is one serious display of skill. Maybe we'll have her skitter off this way again, probably trying her best to lead Vine in the right direction. 
He would never say that he needs her help, but she doesn't want to leave him behind. I suppose it might be time for Jade to return to the oak tree as well, so she can get started on Kipu's training. We have Evie right beside the baby, so she'll be just fine. And then I'm sure Yuri could scoot on back to keep her safe on the next turn. So let's have Jade go all the way over here. In fact, if you go ahead and swap places with Rascal, because I'm sure he's very, very eager to go chasing after those bunnies, you'll have access to a few more of these acorns. This must feel pretty familiar to her, too. She still remembers the days when she was just a baby like Kipu, and cracking open one of these mighty acorns seemed like such an impossible task. And while it still might be for this one-gemmed baby, pretty soon he's going to be just as strong as she is. So we'll leave him right there to play around with the acorns for now. Now one more time, let's just go back here and check. No sign of the rogue male, right? Just bunnies trying their best to hide from you, but Kingsley is going to notice that this one instead. It looks like you could even grab one of these coconuts as well, and as you're getting so close to the end of your lifespan, you should probably talk to the ladies about your son. He's still hoping that they might be willing to take him in, even though the Defender Bear isn't quite such a situation anymore, so there's probably no way that he would be able to offend the Defender Bear. He hopes that with their training, he can be a great hunter too. Part of Kingsley must still be a little bit disappointed that he never inherited that bear Yina Claw. That was all left to Bandersnatch instead. Smothered by thorns and vines, his sickly swamp fur is more apparent than ever. He has great physical strength, but I feel like he's going to be weak in different ways. Maybe he would tire easily? If we have Ben jump over here to be right behind Sybil, he would try to lead Bandersnatch out from the nest. But the poor baby can hardly take a single step forward before he needs to rest again. So all of this probably has Ben very, very concerned. Maybe he's worried that he summoned his mother's spirit in the wrong way. Or maybe he's even worried that Mulberry has gotten to him instead. But for now, let's have Sybil keep hopping her way through these grasses just so we can try to figure out exactly where that rogue male ran off to. She is not going to let any harm come to her family, and she has proven that time and time again. I guess if we do decide to go to the mountains, it would probably be Kingsley's family who takes charge here. I feel like they would be the most likely to seek out this great challenge, especially because they're home to some of our strongest. And on some of his very final days, maybe those ports are exactly what Kingsley is watching. He sees them in the distance, and he knows that his family could do such great things here, if only they had the courage to go explore. Now, do we have any other roots that Dreamer could dig up along the way? Yes, excellent. Quite a few of them appear, actually. Let's settle you down right here, so you should be able to dig up both of these roots on the next turn. Oh, and it looks like you even unlocked the ticking paw for us, too. Well, that's pretty fitting. It must be a good sign for you and your dreams. I guess we should probably have Zara go ahead and clear out the grasses around her. That way it'll be easier for everybody to make their way back. And Volt, for that matter. He's going to go darting straight into the weeds. Maybe he could surprise his father by picking up that bunny meat. Ben is going to have to stay right here for this turn, and it doesn't look like there's anything else that he can reach. Ben has been a pretty excellent babysitter for our creatures. It seems like he's always the most concerned with making sure that nothing's going to pick off their newest generation. Without him, I'm sure that Kingsley's kingdom wouldn't have flourished at all. Oh no, there's the rogue male. Is that the same one? It looks like it might be. Yeah, I think that rogue male was pretty plain. He didn't have any ram horns on him or anything like that. So it seems like he may be spying on the BB right now. Well, let's cross our fingers that he isn't going to get any closer. Hopefully, with Volt sitting right next to Zara, he's not going to try to bother her either. Now let's go back to our bunny hunting party to see if they can find any more tasty little morsels. Yeah, these bunnies are definitely circling around the darkness. Rascal, this might be your time to shine. We'll bring you up here so you can light up a little bit more of the darkness. And hopefully on the next turn, you can send all of those bunnies scattering. I kind of feel like it would be a good idea for us to bring Jasmine and Pixie over to the oak tree itself. Since again, they have some of our highest strength, it might be a good idea for them to protect the babies over here. I know that they won't want to abandon this place since it was Orion's healing fruit. 
but I'm kind of wondering if Chess is going to take it over instead. If he could only find a way to impress Evie enough, maybe he could keep up that tradition too. I don't think that Jasmine and Chess have seen each other since the stream way back by the train, so she's probably happy to see that flash of orange fur again. Let's have her step down here so she can greet him as he goes past. And then I guess that gives Pixie a little bit of time to hop on back to Kip Boom. She'll make sure that nothing dangerous is going to come out and startle them. She can scare them away with that vicious glare of hers. So with Jasmine right next to her baby, I think we should be ready to skip the turn again. Did the rogue male go back into hiding? Yeah, looks like he's still too nervous, so that's definitely a good sign. Let's go ahead and skip the day. We'll zoom out to make sure that no Baryinas are going to slither out from the darkness, too. So far, so good. I didn't hear anything spawn on that turn aside from those pesky bunnies. So it sounds like the bunny hunting mission is still very much in full swing. We'll have to act quickly, too, because I know those bunnies are right behind those bushes. So let's go, rascal. Your father will release you into the darkness, and you can try your best to scare the bunnies out from hiding. It looks like that one definitely worked. Let's have Kaya jump up here, maybe? She won't be able to take the bunny down in one swipe, but she can definitely poison it. And it looks like that was enough to disorient the bunny, too. Now, there's another bunny in the grasses over here, but I think what we're going to do is have Yuri grab these berries so he can go back to his daughter and ensure that she's going to be safe. Actually, we probably could have just moved her down here. That might be a better spot for her. She can watch the bunny hunt a bit more closely this way, and we can make sure that Yuri is close enough to snag the rest of the berries on the next turn. We do have this bunny meat situation, though. Let's have Evie jump down here to gather it up for her. She's kind of doing her best to clean up the bunny meat, I guess, and that's because she's not strong enough to take down the bunnies, too. Now, she's probably expecting that Vine is going to be right in her shadow, but to be honest... I think he's going to veer off into the grasses instead. He knows those bunnies are lurking just around the corner, and if he sticks close to Rascal, it should be pretty easy for him to take some down. Oh my gosh. Rascal, how on earth did you take down that bunny in one swipe? I guess he is learning a thing or two from our hunters. Well, that certainly settles with that. How do you feel to be bested by a rascal vine? A creature with two no paws, just like your father. I guess because of that alone, he probably would know better than to underestimate rascal. He knows that his father was one of the greatest heroes in the entire tribe. But Evie, let's have you scoot on this way so you can see if Chess has caught anything. Here's his moment to shine, and he doesn't have a single bunny to show for it. He is probably panicking right now. So as he leaps atop the bunny burrow, he'll sniff around frantically for some bunnies to catch. But there's truly nothing at all. All he can see is the tide pool in the distance. Would he be brave enough to sneak over to the sand? I mean, it's not as though we know what's lurking in these depths. Let's have him do it. I think he would be willing to risk it for love. And look at this, he's found himself quite the little stash over here. Fish splashing in the water, a water-breathing plant in the deepest parts. I wonder if these would work just as well as the healing fruits that we've used for these babies. I wonder if that would even be a good way to impress some stronger deities. Because dipping your toes into the water here is not for the faint of heart. Well, Chess, you better scoop up those fish for sure. It looks like they're not too bothered either, so you are going to have one serious feast to bring back to Evie. Maybe things are finally starting to turn around for you. Now that she's gotten herself separated from Vine, this is a golden opportunity for you. To be honest, I think she's going to realize that Vine doesn't really feel the same way for her as she does for him. He's far too distracted with chasing glory to humor any thoughts of love. Not to mention he is still very, very young. So she might start to realize that her affection for him was very, very fleeting, and only really took a look at what was on the surface. She'll crave a connection that doesn't feel quite so shallow. Now I wonder if maybe we could cut down a few of these berry bushes with Jasmine? It looks like she isn't quite strong enough to do so on her own, unfortunately. But I was thinking it might be easier for us to run around after these bunnies if we didn't have quite so many poison berries in the way. 
I guess it would be okay, too. I know that it would unfortunately destroy these once and for all. The poison berry bushes don't grow back. But at the moment, Kaya is the only one who can pick them for us. So we might want to consider using a few of our turns to try to hack these down. Especially since there's nowhere else that she can go. And I guess Pixie could actually knock down some of these acorns for you too as well. If we bring Kipu over here, she can scoot in your place and land a nice big swipe on this giant oak tree. It looks like plenty of acorns have grown back for you guys. Comet is watching out for you very well. And now let's go ahead and have full dash around his father, scaring him out from his own thoughts. Oh, that was you, wasn't it? You are so, so lucky that your father is right here to pick that leech off of you. It was just hiding away inside the ocean. That's what I was worried about. We're going to have to make sure that we keep a super close eye on you too, Jess. Especially because everybody else is all tired out now. So if you pick up a leech, you are going to have to dash back to your tribe mates. Because we'll only have one more turn to save you. So Vol, go ahead and pick up that meat, I guess. You're really only proving your father right at this point. He was right to worry about you. And he was right to put your future in Zara and Dreamer's hands too. He knows that they're going to be able to keep a much tighter leash on you than he ever could. But yeah, I would imagine that he's still gazing out at those ports. So I wonder if he would try to get a little bit closer. He only has four days remaining on his lifespan. So this is going to be his last opportunity to see that place for himself but it's also going to be his last opportunity to gather up a few more of these termites. I wonder if that would be a little bit more pressing. Let's make sure that Sara clears out the grasses around here. Oh, is the piranha come up to you, Vault? Well, I'm sure that's not intimidating you one bit, but all the same, you better be careful. A piranha is definitely not a good omen to our tribe mates, and especially not after we just saw a leech. I suppose we could always try to have one more baby between Sybil and Kingsley too. One more chance for a baby with a big banana snout. We know it can definitely happen because their very first baby that passed away did have Kingsley's sticky tongue as well. And unfortunately it seems like nobody in this current generation is going to carry that to the next island with us. We're going to have to rely on inactive traits if we ever want to see it again. But as Dreamer finishes up her turns here, and Ben too of course, it looks like there's nothing else you can pick up around you, so we'll leave that to Dreamer instead. She gathers up her roots, and she observes this sickly little baby. Not sick like those who have passed in the nest, but still very clearly haunted by the shadows of the swamplands. I wonder how that's going to affect him as he grows. But one last time, assuming that all the dangers are far out of our reach, let's go ahead and skip the day again. Oh, an Eevee! It looks like you've actually pinned down a little bunny over here. Probably for fine, right? You're probably calling out to him, hoping that he is close enough to hear, so he can take down yet another bunny right in your line of sight. But unfortunately, he is too distracted by Rascal's show of skill, and now he wants to outdo the other team too. So as Rascal picks up his bunny meat, and as fine skitters off into the darkness, you're going to have to leave this bunny to Jasmine instead. At least that's one good meal that she can feed to little Asher here. He's going to grow up big and strong too. Oh, and Chas, it looks like your fish might actually be getting away. See, this is why you need a fishing buddy. So let's have Evie skitter her way into the grasses. Maybe she's actually trying to find a quiet place to think. A quiet place to soothe her own heart. But instead, she'll run headfirst into Chas as he scoops those fish out from the tide pools with ease. So in the next episode, we'll see if he can present his fishy offering to the beautiful Evie. And based on the results of the poll, we'll figure out which one of the islands we're going to head toward next. Either Kingsley and his mountains, or I guess Chess and Evie with their oasis. And either way, I'm sure we have some pretty big challenges in our path. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!